But the one thing that you noticed, Madden, that, that I never noticed until you had talked about it, <clears throat> like I'd always see him, you know, drinking coffee, right? You know, sure. Of that. I was, and that, that was the thing to me is like, I was like shocked at like, th- th- if, if there was something like, I'm not saying this is like something that would have caused Benoit to do it or like, we never knew anything. But one thing that I did know is that it was, it was unusual to me that I've never seen a human being drink that much coffee. Like he, well, would, no, he would, he would, before the, the day of the show, he would walk like, you know how all the hockey arenas have like the, the runway underneath the concourse beneath right. the stands, so it's a big room. circle. And Benoit would, and, and see, I would walk around it myself just to walk, you know, because I'm a big fat so, and I need to walk where I can. So I would walk around it, and I noticed that Benoit, like almost every day, would walk like an endless lap under the concourse. He'd always stop at the coffee pot every pass and fill it up. It was like drinking an endless cup of coffee, and he would be wearing, almost without fail, no shirt and his dress slacks. Right. <laughs> And he would just walk underneath. Uh, go on to my right. I pointed it out. You saw it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't notice that until you said, it's like, yeah, that's what he did. But the funny thing was, like, somebody would say, ask you, hey, where's Ben Watt? What would you tell him? I would say, go to the coffee pot. He'll be there. <laughs> and not only right. that, bro, he always had, just like Scott had that toothpick in his mouth, he always had that coffee straw in his mouth, right? Yeah, yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Chewing the coffee straw, yeah. drinking coffee. It was chewing like the coffee. Oh, yeah. Chewing but, it, but I, but I never, I never knew like that, that. That is what he was doing because I, I wouldn't just walk around the concourse like you did. Like you noticed that. That was pretty funny. Well, yeah. And, and the one time to, to take that story to another, uh, uh, to 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 a conclusion. One time there was a three way between Benoit Raven and 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 Page on uh, on Nitro, and you know how Page liked to lay everything out, and Benoit pointedly did not. Correct. Right, of course not. So, so Paige had this script, and he was looking for Benoit, and and I actually told him, "Well, just wait by the coffee pot." And then, of course, I waited by the coffee pot because I had to see what would happen. So, so Benoit sure enough comes by, and Paige goes up to him with the script. Benoit doesn't break stride; he grabs the script, rips it like fifty pieces, and just keeps walking. <laughs> That's the first time that I really found out that he had a script, a DDP, because Benoit told me about it. And he was like, can you believe that this guy wrote stuff down? No, bro. <laughs> I mean, you know how DDP is. He's very, like, um, passionate about everything that he did. You know what I'm saying? Right. To the point. Yeah, and, and, and don't get me wrong. Down. I can't criticize that, uh, Conan, yeah. but sometimes it, it went a bit too far. Like, in WWE, they pointedly told him in that match with Undertaker, uh, Hunter pointedly told him, do not go to Undertaker with a script. And sure enough, the next thing Hunter knows, he's looking across catering, and Paige is sitting there showing a script to Undertaker. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what a th- shame. This is a, 